And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Uncensored, Hard Hitting Truth. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21. And I am here with my uh, co host and mentor, and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in uh, 1977, the one and only the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? I'm sad. It's the end of February. Is it? But the weather is still not as it should be. It is the end of February. It is the last day. To, before the Ides of March begin, whatever. <laughs> well, it's the, the end of February. Um, the very end, very tail end of February 2015. It is Saturday afternoon, and uh, uh, you never know what's in store for the month of March weather wise. Anything can happen. But. And also, tornado season begins in the western, certain states, the Midwest of the United States. But the average temperature should be 44. Not 25, as well, we, it is today. We all know that okay. uh, this winter has been one of the most brutal. The second coldest. On record. On record. And we all know it's due to climate change. I don't care what the, uh, what the uh, idiot uh, right wing has to say, because they just, uh, they're just mimicking what the big oil is telling them to ignore the scientists and keep on doing your dastardly dirty deeds. Keep on making that money. So they don't care about the planet. Of course not. And, they, and besides, they got their think tanks coming out with all kinds of Think positions. tanks? Think? They have the ability to think? The Cato Institute, the Heritage Foundation. From the Green Hornet, Bruce Lee, Cato. Yeah. They don't have the capacity to think the right wing. But they make these position papers. Position? They get, they get, as I've told you many times, do not respect... As he told me many times. Do the, not respect persons. You respect titles. They get titled people. To write this propaganda. Yeah, propaganda, okay? right. They pay them to write propaganda. Happened to my tea. Oh, here it is. Over here. Oh, okay. And then their people believe this shite. Okay, okay. well, let me get the formalities over with. Uh, we got plenty of opportunities well, to, pretty formal. to spout at the mouth. No, we, I like to do thing in inc things in increments, you know. Uh, we are broadcasting from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey, and uh, this is completely uncensored uh, uh, mm -hmm. internet talk radio, a progressive internet talk radio at its finest. Mm -hmm. And anything is possible here. We do not rehearse anything. We just we have certain themes that are. Um, set up or that are allocated for the show and they the readings are read are spoken and dealt with depending on how the pile is mm -hmm. you know we just go one by one there's there is no planning or script with this show even though someone told me a long time ago from singapore uh, 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 Asia, that I should um, I should uh, rehearse and and script everything in a more professional, stru structured way. I says yeah, and be like everyone else. Be like everyone else on mainstream media. You know, just uh, uh, blow a bunch of hot air, and uh, uh, be uh, a drone. You know, drone. 
you know, I, I mean, this is uncensored, playing it by ear, okay, unpredictable, un unpredictability. This is closer to real life human interaction than rehearsing and scripting and planning everything out. I think it is. It's, it's more of a reality show than any of these so-called reality shows that you see on TV, which are rigged for the most part. You know, it was same thing with those talk shows. Uh, uh, Bill Cunningham and Jerry Springer and Steve Wilkos. It's obvious they pump up the audience. They they probably hold up cue cards as far as getting them to applaud and scream and yell and. You know what I mean? It's like, and they probably rile up the guests. So uh -huh. th there's a lot of pre-planning uh, connected with mainstream entertainment and mainstream media. But uh, before we do anything, I would like to, uh, before I said I was sad, I would like to have a moment of silence for uh, the, the uh, passing away for the death of actor Leonard Nimoy. And uh, most people know him best as uh, Mr. Spock from Star Trek. Moment of silence. Okay. Leonard Nimoy, um, uh, a Boston, Massachusetts uh, native. Um, he will be missed. And, uh, you know, Mr. Spock, Mr. Spock, it's a it's a big deal, really. I mean, he, he was well loved. It happened to be on the top of the pile. Multitudes of people, you know, and um, he was sick for a while. I heard he was battling an illness for a while. Uh, William yeah, from Shatt. smoking. Oh, is that what it came Obstructive from? Obstructive pulmonary disease. I know a few chain smokers. Uh, one of them is my brother. I know two others. William H. Morrow III, our voiceover artist, and Ken Create. They all smoke like chimneys. And when you show them the commercials, when they see the commercials of the person dying of emphysema or lung cancer, uh, gasping for air, when you tell them that many people care about you and you should quit, not for yourself, but Try to quit for them, or or if you tell, I tell my brother, you got two little girls, two mm. daughters, quit for them, let them have a daddy longer. You know what they do? They they yes me to death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're and right. You, you're right. Oh, I should I should really do something. And about you it. think you can turn political minds around by facts? No, we're talking about your health, your life. Do, does a, does a chain smoker want to suffer? Want to die a very painful death? It's Suck, all an addiction. A, a gasping for air from emphysema. You've mm -hmm. seen the commercials, of course. I don't understand the logic of people today. I don't understand it because it's not due to logic. Whatever hurt, it's an what, addiction. Whatever happened to scared straight? It's an addiction. Talk about scared straight. You know, Those those commercials are enough to scare anybody straight. <laughs> not uh, not Cheney's crowd and uh, those guys. Oh, Chris Cheney, and and yes. Uh, Dick Cheney. They don't the, get scared straight. The demon Dick Cheney, the man with the mechanical heart and the man who shoots his friends in the face on hunting trips. Nice guy. <laughs> I don't think anybody's oh, no. anybody in their right mind would go hunting with Dick Cheney anymore. <laughs> Uh, I want to um, congratulate a um, a very long time, a very good friend of mine, uh, Lisa Cohen, for her book uh, that uh, made uh, the Amazon bestseller list. Her recent book called titled "Overcome the BS of MS." Mm -hmm. A three-step plan for women living with multiple sclerosis, uh, you know, which is an autoimmune disease. Uh, uh, Lisa Cohen is the lead vocalist for Rockstar Women with MS. 
multiple sclerosis. So, congratulations, and I salute Lisa Cohen on her new book. Salute. Salute. And also, I would like to say, give greetings to my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho, and uh, the my also my good friend and uh, personal trainer extraordinaire. Uh, in Boca Raton, Florida, former WWE Pro Wrestling star, uh, Mr. Uh, Ken Thiessen. Greetings to Ken Thiessen. And greetings to all of my wonderful administrators of the uh, Facebook groups, which is Sash uh, Boyle, uh, Jolton Joe Stebbins, all right, and uh, Anthony Laura. Um, yeah. I don't, I do believe, oh, and uh, I'm sorry, and uh, Jean-Luc Odon of the Southern France is an administrator too, Jean-Luc, I salute you, all of you, um, so, um, let's see what we got here, oh, um, for the Chisler's Hall of Shame, I want to induct all of these um, free, these some of these companies that uh, offer free programs online, so you don't have to spend money. Uh, it could be anti-malware, spy, anti-spyware, uh, uh, antivirus. It could be anything. Uh, some of them have a great reputation, and some of them I use. But one in particular that I use, that it was highly rated by PC World Magazine, uh, is AVG Antivirus, uh, also Avast, got a good rating, but I like AVG better. But with what AVG did, you, you um, download on the version you want, whether it be 32 bits or 64 bits, and you download on the free version, which is excellent. And all of a sudden, every day, you get these uh, notices that your trial has only so many days left before it expires. And I'm wondering, what trial? I, I did not download on the, uh, the, the um, deluxe version that you have to pay for. I downloaded mm -hmm. on the free version. So. I don't know if it's a glitch on their part or they're just trying to, in a sneaky way, get me to buy the deluxe version. Finally, it expires, mm. and they say, and it says you are not protected. I says, wait a minute, I downloaded on the free version. I go to um, uninstall it so I could start over again. Then all of a sudden, I uninstall it. It offers me the free version, but I already selected the free version to begin with. So what I'm trying to say is the way sales is in this uh, crony is crony capitalist conservative run country you know with deregulation companies are allowed to be more sneaky sneakier uh, lie more to the consumer uh, with, with really less custo custom service uh, uh, just be underhanded. Use use obnoxious, pushy, underhanded tactics. Screw you over. In many ways, I'm not saying AVG is a bad company. It's a great product. But if I'm selecting the free version, there's a reason for it. I don't want the one that you have to pay for. And it it seems like the only difference is the one that you pay for has a firewall. But I don't care because I'm using the Windows firewall. So, you know, usually there's not a lot of difference between the version you pay for and the version you get for free. So, to AVG and to all you companies out there trying to be real sneaky with the consumer, play with their minds, shame on you. You're in the Chisler's Hall of Shame. Uh... Of course, I can go on and on about many things like, uh, you know, um, 
an advertise. Well, first of all, you shouldn't be eating any food that has an advertisement because nine times out of ten, <laughs> ten times out of ten, it's corporate. If it's corporate, it's it's toxic. <laughs> it's full of garbage. But you know, you get the deception of the portion size. Hey, they do it with fast food. Oh, speaking of fast food, McDonald's is in some hot water. Uh, somebody checked out the, the ingredients of the chicken McNuggets. I think they were recalled, and they found all kinds of nasties in there. Mm. Oh, they Mc said it was all white meat. Oh, sure, yeah. McDonald's McNuggets. Yeah, they found all kinds of gross stuff in there. Oh my God! There's Good thing I don't eat it. I mean, I don't want to say it because it'll make me nauseous. Huh? But trust me, real gross shit. Uh, 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 they allow shit in hot dogs. Rat shit. They allow... I, I bet the same pink slime that goes into a McDonald's burger is is, is more or less the, what goes into a, um, a nationally advertised hot dog. I mean, the um, the pate that goes that makes a hot dog looks exactly like pink slime. Uh, like yeah. You know. So uh, now I want to. I guess save. Well, which one should I do first? Okay, the douchebag punk Scott Walker governor of Wisconsin made a recent statement very obnoxious statement saying bragging that he uh, he uh, broke up or busted this 100,000 person protest he withstood them he withstood them he withstood 100, them 100,000 pro you know how many people 100,000 is uh, he really he really took on a hundred thousand protesters at once? He withstood them so he can withstand ISIS. He and he compared un and he compared unions to ISIS. And teachers. Hey, that's what was part and of then that it, was part of the hundred thousand. And then his last statement was I could take on the world, something like that. ISIS. I, I could take He's, he's going to take on the world, man. No, that's a statement. He says he's going to take on the world. But he's trying to <laughs> clarify his bona fides for foreign policy for his presidential run. Oh, God, help me. Okay. You're very, you're, you're, you're like, you're, you're similar to Elizabeth Warren and sometimes Bernie Sanders. You're being very kind and diplomatic with these scumbags and they don't, they needed well, to be treated. Doing in a more disrespectful, nastier, undiplomatic way. They're not entitled to respect. This guy is a, he's an arrogant punk for making a statement like he's that. A, he's corrupt. They're investigating him for corruption. But he's being so obnoxious. Political corruption. But he's, instead of being, look, yeah, but humble, instead of being more humble, he's being more arrogant about it. Because he can be. Because criticism from you ain't going to hurt him. Because nobody is challenging, nobody in the mainstream media or no mainstream. The Demo look, from Eli his own. Elizabeth Warren calls the uh, Republicans in the White House, in, in the Capitol building, her fellow colleagues. Colleagues, yeah, well. they're scum. Colleagues, there you go. Colleagues, they're colleagues. Now the point is when any kind of criticism coming from. Pollyanna liberal, huh? mainstream, independent, or something, ain't going to be listened to. It's got to come from their own. So you can't, so in other words, even if you jump up and down and demand equal airtime on the mainstream media, the mainstream media won't give you the equal airtime. Why but should they? Let's say... Alpha I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about... What did Republicans say? I'm talking about rebuttaling. Do. I'm talking about rebuttaling them. Yeah, but the, any rebuttal is 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 is, is uh, thought of as criticism, and any criticism from the other side is not going to be listened to. This is what you have to understand. It's not. Well, no, they won't care because they're so corrupted. Exactly. 
But the American p voter should know what's going on for real. Yeah, he cared the last time out in 2014, didn't he? Oh, speaking of speaking of distractions, uh, look at over there. You know the world. Ah, well, what's over there? The world's the oldest trick in the book. Look at over there, the big uh, distraction, the big smoke screen. I want to induct News 12 New Jersey, which is a, a local cable station, into the, I don't know if it's Chisler's Hall of Shame, but, well, this is what we have already, so Chisler's Hall of Shame. For being a news station that reports more ridiculous trivial, petty, utter nonsense than any other news station I, I've ever watched. They do not ever bring up any of the chicanery from the Republicans, period, or the Koch brothers, or Chris Christie, or nothing. No, nothing controversial. They do not tell people what's really going on. Instead, they give all little trivial, oh, Joe Blow, uh, uh, Joe Sixpack, uh, his daughter won an award, and blah 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 blah, blah. and and they talk about a uh, little a lot of music industry. You know, people from New Jersey who are entertainers, and Bruce Springsteen, and this and that, and all crap. They never ever bring up anything vital and important to society and to the people of New Jersey ever. And then they repeat it. And they repeat it over and over and. Talk about redundancy. Over and over and over and over. It's the same exact crap. And they do it with a big smile. And anytime they mention Chris Christie, they have a big smile. And they never have one fucking discouraging word about Chris Christie ever. Nothing. Unless it's big news that he really, really is in hot water. Then they, they, they sort of have to mention it. But they don't say shit about anything important. It's all silly stuff. It's almost like they're they're keeping Ameri uh, the New Jersey people's minds off of what's really going on out there. Well, that's what mainstream does. That's their job. So they're told to do this. I don't know if they're told. This is what they do. Whatever happened to? old-fashioned journalism. What happened, what happened to the dignity it of the journalist? died with Watergate. Dignity of the journalist. He died at the Watergate. They went into entertainment because it was cheaper. Entertainment. Oh, that's why the, the news, the weather uh, uh, a reporter tries to act all funny and cute and, and, and they tease each one another on the news. Mm -hmm. The co-anchors, they're telling jokes, they're flirting. They're, so this is all to entertain. Ent entertain the viewer. Instead of telling people what's really freaking going on, like the Antarctic ice sheets are are melting at a rapid race, a rate and will transform the look of the planet Earth. Oh no, they're not talking about that. They're talking about all this other nonsense, nonsense and, and, and garbage. Uh -huh. And pettiness. Uh -huh. All right. I want to end with what I call capitalism in a conch shell. You've heard of nutshell? Well, it's a conch shell because it rhymes with capitalism. CC, not CC writer. Capitalism in the conch shell, for those of you that have at least 50% of your original brain cells, you would notice everything that's going on today. It's pretty obvious. It bites you right on the end of your nose. If you have Ow. any common sense, huh? Ow. How does it bite you on your other? Sit ow. It bit me on the end of my nose. Oh, ouch. Yeah. You know, you have people. Uh, I'll use a perfect example. I'll use Kentucky for an example. A lot of poverty in Kentucky. But what did they do? They uh, they reelected that ugly, miserable, uh, turtle-faced uh, uh, demon troll, whatever you want to call him, Mitch McConnell. And now I have to see his ugly mug for another six years. 
Yeah. I because of the people in, of Kentucky. Shame on you. I can't stand you, Costanza. I can't stand you. I have more contempt for you, uh, redneck, uh, right wing teabaggers in Kentucky than any other part of the country. Well, maybe Texas. <coughs> you, because of you, you morons and 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 and, and uh, um, lame brains, total idiots. Maybe you're inbred. I don't know. Because of you people, I have to look at photos of that ugly motherfucking miserable frog-lipped turtle-faced Mitch McConnell for another six years. But getting back to the poverty of a red state like Kentucky, you could throw other states in there if you want, Mississippi, West Virginia, but we'll deal with Kentucky because, because of that miserable Mitch McConnell, the dastardly, ugly Mitch McConnell. I call him a two-bagger. You need a bag, paper bag, for his head and your head, just in case the bag on his head falls off. The people are in poverty. Their life is really not improving, it's getting worse. And what do they do? They re-elect the biggest corporatists of all time, the Republican, Mitch McConnell. And then you got Rand Paul over there too. They re-elect them and these people have the least, they don't have any of their best interests of the poor at all. They're totally corporatist, they're totally for the rich, but they re-elect them. This is like, this doesn't make sense. This is illogical. Those people like to give subsidies to big oil and not give a couple of pen, uh, pennies to the poor. Well, subs it's as simple as that. Corporate subsidies. Smaller government. Corporate subsidies vastly outnumber, outnumber the, co right. the cost of food stamps. That's correct. In America. Or but any social like services. Huh? They like it that way. So these people are, are, are their standard of living is getting worse and worse, but they're, they keep on re-electing the people that are in, totally in bed with the fat cats, with the top 1%, people that don't have their best interests at heart, they keep on re-electing them. Well, this is, I would say, the stupidity, the great stupidity of America in the old conch shell, but capitalism in the conch shell? Story that happened to yours truly. More than, set, well, I'd say about eh, several years ago. I used to have a, a, a Chase Bank Platinum credit card with a wonderful 3.9% interest because of my my credit was impeccable i was getting plat i was getting pre approved pre approved pre approved platinum cards from everyone that i had to turn away cuz i don't believe in having multiple cards they get you in bigger trouble one card can get you in trouble anyway for years i was making my payments on time enjoying the 3.9 percent. I was never really late, really. And uh, based on my history, Chase didn't care. They could care less about how good I was of a, as a customer in the past. All they knew was that because the post office delivered my payment a day late, <laughs> They took my 3.9% interest and they jacked it up way over 20%. I, yep. Way over 20% as a penalty because my, as an excuse to do it, because my payment was a day late that was no fault of my own. The post office just happened to be a little slow and they, they were one day late, they took away my 3.9% and I told them to go fuck themselves. This is an example of capitalism in a conch shell because you you have a corporation that doesn't really care about any of its consumers they don't respect your track record they don't respect your reputation how you made your payments on time for years they don't care about that 
they just, <clears throat> out of contempt and out of greed, they just took one technicality that your payment was a day late and they decided to instantly take away your 3.9% interest that you worked towards to build your credit and sock you with over 20%. 25, I think it was. 25, exactly. it's like spitting in your face as a customer. And you know what? Their customer service did not budge one inch. They, don't know. they didn't care. I called them up, they didn't care. Of course. They did not care about how I made my payments for years. Chisler's Hall of Shame, I know I did this before. Chase Bank. And I have a feeling all the other banks are like that too. Mm -hmm. You suck. You're j just as bad as, as an evil, evil, greedy corporate demon as any other American corporation. Chisler's Hall of Shame. And that, my friends, is an example, a real life example of capitalism in a conch shell. This is the essence of capitalism that right-wing corporatist crony crony a po, po, a career politicians are all about capitalism in a conch shell I like waving this around anyway it's the first time I ever did this capitalism in a conch shell I used to have a gigantic conch but it got lost in the shuffle when we moved one time I don't know what happened to it Oh gee, I can hear a nice, I can hear, it's actually the echo of your, your inner ear, right? When you hold the shell up. I don't know, I thought it was the man inside. It's not, it's, it, well, people usually say you can hear the ocean. Yeah. As long as I'm not, swimming. as long as I'm not hearing the, all the bullshit from Fox News. You know, he's swimming in there, that's all. Yeah. All See. Right. John Stewart, uh, they showed a pretty good video of all the Fox lies, <laughs> you know, and uh, uh, it did not appear on my page as a video. Oh no! It appeared that it had no thing that you click on to start the video. Okay? People, I really dig that video from Bernie Sanders titled "Pope Francis." I saw it. That was good. That was right. Pope Francis, yeah, outstanding he wants, speech. He wants them to invite Pope Francis to the uh, Senate. Oh, oh, speak before oh the but Senate. they sure love uh, having Netanyahu, Netanyahu Benjamin yeah. Netanyahu, speak before the Congress. Yeah, Mr. Boehner <coughs> wants that, yes. Old Tropicana orange face with the orange, with the tears, the crocodile tears. Mr. Boehner is... Uh, even being, I guess, spiteful to some of his Republican colleagues when it comes to the Department of Homeland Security. Well, the Department issue. of Homeland Security is a white elephant. They didn't need it. George Bush put it together and as a job creation. Oh yeah, like the Please. Keystone Pipeline. Yeah, sure. Well, no, the, the Homeland Security will take care of old Republicans when they get out of the jobs that they have. Then they can go over there and sit around and push do papers. nothing but destroy, destroy the country. Push papers around, yeah. paper pushing. That's, yeah, that's what that was all about. It didn't really do anything because... No, uh, because it, it, the CIA, the FBI, and Naval Intelligence, and whatever, there's the, uh, 13 other uh, spy organizations in America. We did not need Homeland Security. It's just another boondoggle. Boondoggle. You know. And, and then they talk about big government. George Bush put more big government in, 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 in the process than anybody. Medicare, Medicare Part D, uh, the Iraq War, the Afghanistan War, and, and Homeland Security. Come on. You're talking trillions of dollars here. Okay. Oh, wow, trillions of dollars. Wouldn't that have eradicated poverty in the United States? If people wanted to. Quickly. But God forbid they won't do that because that makes l poor people lazy. And the deficit. And the deficit. It's like, 
There was no deficit when yeah. Clinton left office. Right, but GW created it. But you wouldn't think that if you spoke to any of these these idiot teabaggers. Well, Rush Limbaugh says there was no uh, 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 surplus. What a, what, a, okay. what a fat, lying idiot. Of I course know. there was a surplus. Under Clinton? Under Clinton. Of course there was a surplus. What a stupid, fat fuck. Rush and the Limbaugh reason we is. got that uh, surplus was uh, because of a job creation and he raised the taxes on the rich from 35% to 39.6%. Yeah, yeah. A hamburger flipping jobs and uh, of course now the job creation is in third world countries. Of course. But anyway, uh, let us sink our teeth into these readings. Oh, by my conkhead friend. Conk. Scungili in Italian, we say. Scungili. Conk. Capitalism in a conch shell. All right. Here, let me do a photo. Let me do a photo op with my conch. <laughs> oh, my God. Make up, make up. <laughs> Oh Lord! Keep quiet. Be nice. Oh Lord! <laughs> Capitalism in a conch shell. Illogical <laughs> but true. Yeah. Yes. The pointy-eared alien, Mr. Spock. Played by Leonard Nimoy was the most human character on Star Trek. And it was Nimoy who died Friday at age 83 in Los Angeles. Who turned the Saturnine Vulcan into the signature character of TV's signature sci-fi franchise. Yeah. One whose impact went far beyond the small screen. You see, sometimes being typecast can be a very positive thing. And it worked with Leonard Nimoy and Spock. Nimoy, who reportedly died of end-stage chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, had a career that went above and beyond the Starship Enterprise's original five-year mission to explore strange new worlds. Aborted two years early when NBC canceled the original series in 1969. I'm dedicating this entire show to uh, Leonard Nimoy, by the way. He was a Hollywood director. Three Men and a Baby. Star Trek Three. The Search for Spock. A busy stage, TV, film, and radio actor, a photographer, writer, patron of the arts. In 2002, the old revival movie house at New York Symphony Space was rechristened the Leonard Nimoy Thalia in honor of his key role in restoring it. But it was Spock the actor's calling card for 50 years that helped enable all of this. He brought the character back for a series of movies starting with 1979's Star Trek The Motion Picture and played him as late as 2013 Star Trek Into Darkness opposite Zachary Quinto as his younger self. For most of Nimoy's career, Spock was his alter ego, his albatross. Yeah. Yeah. His goodwill ambassador. He titled his first autobiography in 1975, I Am Not Spock. His second in 1995, I Am Spock. NBC hated the character. Really? 
Really? How did Gene Roddenberry feel about it? When the first unaired Star Trek pilot, The Cage, with Jeffrey Hunter, that was with Jeffrey Hunter. Yeah, the, the uh, aliens with the, with the veins throbbing, mm -hmm. the big heads. Was made in 1965. Wow. The network asked specifically that Mr. Spock be dropped. What's their friggin' problem? Creator Gene Roddenberry's response was to drop every character except Mr. Spock. Friggin' network executives, I hate them. In the first Star Trek advertisements, Spock's pointy ears were airbrushed around. Oh, why they felt his pointy ears is a little too, like, uh, demonic? So, who knows what goes through their feeble minds, network, Hollywood network executives. It did seem to go against do, all do, storytelling. They're all douchebags, anyway. Oh, uh, well, logic. How could TV audiences be expected to identify with an alien being, actually half alien, half human, with an alarming satanic appearance? What did I say? The right wing, the right wing of uh, the puritanical waspy zealots of the United States did not take well to the pointy-eared Spock. How could they become emotionally invested in a character who was himself emotionless, logical, almost a walking computer? Well, he was from, he was half human, his mother was human, uh, but, but, but he's alien, what do they want? An alien that acted very human? What, what, what douchebags? What Roddenberry sensed that the NBC executives didn't was the changing nature of the 1960s television audiences. Also Nimoy's skill as an actor and his offbeat sex appeal. Hey, they went with the controversy at the time of All in the Family. That was controversial, groundbreaking show. And, and, they, and, and you know, the rest is history, but... Adolescent boys, particularly the subset that in a more tolerant age would probably identify as nerd liked the idea of a character who suppressed all those messy emotions. He was the science officer on the Enterprise. That can make teendom a hell. And girls loved the en enigmatic cool guy that they felt in their heart of hearts they could melt if they could have the chance. The g g girls have this fantasy of fixing men with uh, issues. Star Trek Challenge. writers took advantage, creating show after show in which beauteously alien women, stand-ins for the viewers, would come on to Mr. Spock only to be coolly rebuffed. That's what made him cool. That's what made him cool. He could not be swayed and seduced and and tricked. And th there was no uh, Delilah and Samson when it came to Spock. You he, know, even more than the heroic Captain Kirk, William Shatner. It was Nimoy Spock who was the sex symbol of the original Star Trek. Really, I thought uh, I thought William Shatner banged everybody on that series. As thousands of fan letters testify. From what I heard, even banged the green lady. Above all, Spock was an other. The very thing the network disliked. Yeah. And the thing that fans instinctively, instinctively latched onto. In an age when television networks fashioned regular guy heroes such as Lorne Green's Ben Cartwright Bonanza. So corny those shows were. To appeal to a hypothetical mainstream audience, Mr. Spock spoke to all the viewers who felt left out. 
Yeah, westerns were really big back then. That's how uh, Gene Roddenberry sold Star Trek to Channel 4, really? NBC. He called it like wagon train to the stars. Because uh, westerns were so big. Wagon train was big, big deal. Then. Oh yeah, yeah, in Chuck Connors, there was it the rifle? Rifle man! I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do a scene from uh, one of the uh, sp Clint Eastwood spaghetti westerns. How much for a bath and a shave? That'll be seventy-five cents. Remember when he walked into the barber shop and uh, 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 the guy was real nervous, the barber, and he said, "Mordecai, was it Morde Mordecai? The, Mordecai, the, the little person." Yeah can't use the M word anymore. The uh, a vertically challenged person, Mordecai, get the hot water for the bathtub. It was, it was always a, a Mordecai, a vertically challenged, as opposed to like Honey Boo Boo's mother who was horizontally challenged. That always got the hot water for the tub. Anyway, 75 cents. Uh, the Outcast, the Nerds, the Rebels. In one 1969 episode, The Way to Eden, Mr. Spock was even adopted by a tribe of interstellar hippies. I remember that episode. Yeah, that's where Kirk taught how to, how to punch. <laughs> the guy with the white remember hair. Remember the minstrel dude with the long hair? He's singing. Yes. Yay, yeah, yeah, brother. Eat the fruit and throw away the rind. Yeah, yeah, brother. Oh, some Writers, place. far from finding Spock an unfeeling cipher, were fascinated by his inner conflicts, his suppression of his emotional human side, and the way that his cool persona complemented the excitable Dr. McCoy, uh, the late DeForest Kelly, and the stalwart Captain Kirk. Yeah, Bones McCoy. They were a Wizard of Oz, uh, Oz a trio. Brains, heart, and courage. And they were irresistible. You know, for, for such a low budget series that, um, you know, did not, did not have, um, uh, the best of um, hope, you know. They didn't think it was going to make it. It sure well, became. They kicked it off two years early. They said it, it, it sure it became. Was supposed to have a five-year run. It's, it sure became a legend. It in sure became legendary. In syndication, yeah. Yeah, well, same thing with the honeymooners. Much of this was Roddenberry's doing, but it was Nimoy's quizzical laid-back performance and all the little touches he brought to the character that made Mr. Spock so memorable. I think even Rod Serling's Twilight Zone became legendary in syndication, right? Became bigger than life in syndication. The Vulcan nerve pinch. The Vulcan nerve pinch, right, exactly. The was Vulcan his. death grip. So was that little split-fingered TV gesture that accompanied Mr. Spock's live long and prosper. What about the Vulcan, the Vulcan mind meld, which I hope, which it's a shame we can't do it with all the uh, American uh, voters out there, or American I idiots that didn't vote. The Vulcan mind meld. It was, of all things, a ritual Jewish gesture the shape of the Hebrew letter Shin. That's where he got it from. Nimoy remembered when from he, his childhood. When he was young and, and going to temple. In Boston synagogue. In synagogue, yeah, yeah. The original Star Trek series, 1966-69, to 69, misunderstood by its network, shuffled to increasingly bad time slots. I remember that. Can't do it with my right hand. Never made it. Can do it with my left hand, though. In its fourth season. But its fan base from the first was intense. In syndication, the series flourished. When Star Trek was revived in the 70s and 80s, first as a television cartoon, then as a series of movies, 
Then as a series of series, Mr. Spock remained the very heart of the franchise, the symbol of the optimistic future that almost alone among sci-fi prophets Roddenberry saw for mankind. The emotional high point of Star Trek. Any iteration is the climax of the film Star Trek II, the wrath of Khan. Yeah, yeah. I, 1982. I would say, I would say Spock was the, the, the trademark of the whole series and the movies. The when yeah. Kirk watches helplessly as his friend Mr. Spock slowly dies in front of him. Well, too bad there's no real Genesis project to bring back. <laughs> well, seemingly dies. This is a franchise after all. Yeah. Of all the souls I have encountered on my travels, Kirk eulogizes near tears. His was the most human. Nimoy wouldn't have been human if he didn't have mixed feelings about the box that Mr. Spock put him in. He had been a Stanley Kowalski on stage, 1955. Well, he did purposely, I mean, in, in the series, uh, Mr. Spock did purposely suppress some of his human emotions, and, and, and rarely he would have a, sh a little outburst of it, a short outburst of it. Uh, but we are talking about his acting career. Oh, okay, now we're on the acting career. You know? All right. And Mr. Spock, like you said, typecast him. Therefore, he didn't get other roles. No. But in 1955, as I said, he was Stanley Kowalski on stage. Uh, had been discovered by Roddenberry in 1963 Marine Corps drama series, The Lieutenant. But after Star Trek, for better or worse, he was pegged as that Spock guy. What can you do? So I guess even in science fiction you can get typecast. His, not, ju not just horror. His subsequent efforts, good and bad, tended toward the geeky or wonky. He did two lively seasons on Mission Impossible as the disguise Master Paris. Oh, didn't Harrison Ford end up getting typecast as Indiana Jones and uh, Luke Skywalker from the Star Wars? Which he I'm released a series of slightly ridiculous records. Anybody remember the Ballad of Bilbo Baggins? No. On the Dot label? Later gigs included things like hosting the 1977 series In Search Of. Oh yeah, I love that show. Yes, he did. He narrated it and playing on emotionless alien psychologists hatched from a pod. In the 70, 1978 remake of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Yeah, I used to watch uh, In Search Of and also uh, Carl Sagan's original... Um, Cosmos. Cosmos, yeah. Carl Sagan's original Cosmos, yeah. But like the Star Trek's intrepid explorers, he meanwhile sought out new frontiers. Directing, recording, publishing poetry, appearing in a self-created one-man show about Vincent van Gogh, creating a series of radio plays, Alien Voices, with Star Trek. The next generation actor, John Delancey. Nimoy lived long and prospered. Now it's time to say goodbye, not to Mr. Spock, who will continue in the person of Quinto in the J.J. Abrams Star Trek reboot yeah. movie franchise. I but hope I hope Shatter gets um, a role in the next movie. But to the actor who first brought him to life and stamped his own personality on one of sci-fi's most indelible characters. 
And yes, it's okay to get emotional. Yeah. Well, rest in peace, uh, Leonard Nimoy and um, uh, William Shatner's in his 80s too. But William Shatner mm -hmm. took care of his health. Obviously, he's so damn energetic and busy. Have you seen him in his new commercial? Funny as hell. Funny as hell. He's got a big round belly and uh, well, I, I, I and mean, that rosacea he's got on his face. He's I, got tinnitus in the ears. What do you want? He's in his eighties, man. Well, wait a minute. Age has nothing to do with. Yeah, you're right. You're right. The human body was uh, uh, physiologically in the right conditions to live to 150. Physiologically under the ideal conditions, the most ideal conditions, you know. Anyway, we're going to take a break. Uh, it is now time for the Reverend, Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch, and we will be joined by our voiceover artist, William H. Morrow III, with, with <coughs> his promo and words of wisdom. And I would just like to remind you people, don't listen to Republicans or teabaggers. There never was, and there ne there never will be a uh, most likely never will be a real workable trickle down economics. It's all a lie. It was all a lie. It's siphon up to the top twenty percent, or what do you think? One percent or just twenty? 20. 20. Top 20%. The 1% get more. Top 20% siphon up to the rich. There you go. To the fat cat's economics. There, there is go. There is no trickle down. Fat cat's economics. Fat cat flugy with the Floyd Floyd. Yeah, that's what it's all fat about. Fat cat yeah. economics. The devil's economics. That's correct. All right. We'll see you after uh, uh, Billy Morrow. I'm William Morrow. Wake up, people, because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. All righty. Bring my glasses on your way over there. Certainly. Certainly. Yeah. All right, we're back. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow the third. Your words of wisdom and promo. Um, this um, this week's show is in, in honor of uh, actor Leonard Nimoy, who uh, sadly passed away very recently. Uh, I dedicate the show to him. Uh, here he is up here. Your little action figure of Leonard Nimoy right there, next to the skull. Um, another um, addition to the uh, Chisler's Hall of Shame is another personal story that I have. Uh, people on my food group, titled Everything is Food, over on Facebook, 
they're well aware that I, I was always happy and thrilled with my Presto 6 quart stainless steel pressure cooker, which I've had for years. Uh, the only thing that wears out on a pressure cooker is the uh, rubber gasket that fits inside the lid. And then there's a plug that, I mean, every time you buy the gasket, you get a new plug that goes in the hole. Now, um, what, what's been happening is my gasket has not been lasting that long. Mm. It wore out rather quickly. And they cost now, they cost $10 each. There's no way that I'm going to be buying new gaskets this quickly at $10 a pop from the hardware store. There's no way I'm going to do this. And, and there's no generic gasket that's much cheaper that I can order that I know of yet. So what I'm trying to get at is when I first got the pressure cooker, the gaskets did not wear out nearly as fast as they do now. So is is it maybe uh, built in obsolescence into the pressure cooker gasket? Thank you very much <clears throat> conservative crony capitalism and deregulation and corporate American greed strikes again. Shame on you I induct the Presto uh, Kitchen Appliance Company that does make other products into our Chisler's Hall of Shame, shame on you, for causing me to use alternative cooking methods and not use my pressure cooker because mm. I put the pressure cooker in storage in the basement because I refuse to constantly spend ten dollars a pop. I mean I always I only had the gasket, the new gasket, and maybe a few months, a couple months, something like that. That's all. And I was told by a friend you have to flip the gasket around when it starts to leak water because the purpose of the gasket is to seal it when you close the lid. Okay, so the pressure rises. And then you could tell it's not it's ready to throw out is the gasket usually sh um, shrinks in size and you see water dripping out from under the lid. Well, I haven't had it that long, you know, <clears throat> and this never happened before. I flipped the gasket over, and lo and behold, it still leaked. Therefore, there is now built-in obsolescence, American-made products that are probably uh, made in China. American companies with products made in China. You all suck, and uh, I'm just not going to use it any longer. I'm, I, I'm using something else. I have sort of a stovetop convection type of a system that I had with a dome lid. It's a dome. Anytime you deal with a dome on top of a uh, like a wok shaped pan, you have the circulation of hot air in a circle and you have convection cooking. But anyway, shame on you. Okay, now. Let's get back to this, these readings. Um, uh, another extra additional congratulations to Lisa Cohen on her book, her new book, the, the BS of MS on Amazon. <laughs> Bestseller. Former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Oh, Motormouth. Oh. has conceded that President Obama is a patriot. Since patriot means love of country, Giuliani has to first decide what he is talking about. Yeah, he was saying Obama don't love his country. You don't, yeah, you know, like some, yeah. So telling the truth means you're not a patriot, right? Obama has praised America many times. He has also criticized its mistakes. Has he really? Has Rogers never heard of slavery? 
and the Trail of Tears? Obama cited these mistakes in the spirit of Christian humility Slavery. to find common ground with other nations so that we all can, in biblical words, reason together. Yeah, Ob uh, President Obama mentioned the Crusades, which really happened. He may or may not have mentioned the Inquisition. Uh, what if he didn't? I'm throwing it in there. Uh, you know, we're talking about right-wing zealot radicals. And uh, aside from slavery, you have the genocide of the Native American people, which I will add that we must That's not forget. That's the trail of tears. That we must not forget. Okay. On a level playing field involving all sinners, not addressing other nations from a putative, morally superior vantage point. For Rogers... That's the guy who wrote the, the uh, article. Here's our beef with the president. For Rogers to mention only the Crusades is a cop-out. The president also cited the Inquisition, slavery, and Jim Crow laws. Mm -hmm. He might have added the religious war between Catholics and Protestants. Right in the name of the Prince of Peace. Yeah. For a new government to reach out to hostile countries with a view to seeing if things can be mended is only natural. Obama found out they cannot be. Would Rogers prefer not trying? As for military solutions, has not Rogers learned anything at all from the debacles in Vietnam, Afghanistan, and Iraq? About the futility of fighting an ideology by making war in remote places we do not understand. Well, the truth is the truth. You know, and um, what did Jesse Ventura say? If you if you always tell the truth, you don't need to have a good memory. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> you don't have to make up. So, uh, well, well, let's see. On Tuesday, uh, January the fourth, I said this. Uh, 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 ooh, I gotta remember that. You don't no, have to no, do you that. just make the statement. If it's hundred percent accurately the truth, then that's all. You have to be concerned about it, as long as Come you're, to it. you know, on, on the other hand, Republicans and people from Fox News, they're always lying, so, you know. <laughs> and then three months down the road, they say, oh, I didn't say that. <laughs> oh, yes, you Let's did. go to the videotape. Was that? No, Wal no, don't do that. Warner Wolf, right? Let's go to the videotape. That'll uh, prove me wrong, but guess what? I'll still have my job here at Fox News. Oh, um, Florida Governor uh, Rick Scott, who looks like a, uh, a, 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 a walking and talking Q-tip. He's got a head shaped like a Q-tip. Uh. Okay. He, um, he uh, wants to arrest couples living together without mm. being married. He, he, uh, he's a typical, he's like the people over in... Uh, um, Kansas and Oklahoma who, who all think they have a bat phone to God. They feel that, uh, you know, well, God talks to them and tells them to go out and be judge, jury, and executioner and, and uh, um, um, stick their nose, their long Pinocchio nose into people's bedrooms, telling people how to live their life. Yeah, and doing being, that one thing will make them a good Christian. A Republican is let me tell you something. Republican is not only the worst hypocrite around, but they are the farthest away from being a, a good Christian. Because what they, how they act, how they behave, and what they say uh -huh. has n nothing to do with the God of the Bible. Nothing! Which they do not know. So he wants to arrest people for living together. Mixing church and state, here we go again with Republicans. Well, they don't want to feed the poor either. 
No, they want the poor to die, yeah. Totally. They don't care about babies born if, if they happen to be poor kids. And they want to arrest, in Kansas, Oklahoma, they want to arrest teachers for having truthful books in the yeah. classroom. In other words, they don't want the teachers to teach students the truth no. about America, American history, whatever. They want them to pro, uh, pre provide their lying books, their altered books, rewritten. Their books that have no input from science. My books sucked. My history books, when I was a kid, were full of lies and half truths. I didn't. I, I was never taught about uh, 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 the slave trade or or the genocide of Native Americans. I was never told many truths. You know. I mean, my history books. My God, they made General C Custer look like a hero. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And all the pioneers, and uh, even those that went west for the gold rush. They were all heroes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? And they pushed those savages off our land. Savages? Yes, savages. Yes. Just like if you if you stand up to and criticize a, a, a liar and an evil person, they'll turn around and call you, oh, you're, you're, you're a hater. Yes. You're, you're negative. You're a hater. They you're like to hater. say hater. Ooh. Because you're criticizing them and you're exposing them for what they really are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is what they do. Um, the, um, oh my God, there's, there's so many skeletons involving American history that I don't think any textbook in school ever really revealed in detail. You know, I mean. Well, how can they when they come out of Texas? I, I mean, Texas determines. I mean, from the colon the textbooks from, we will buy from the original in America. from the original colonization of the uh, eastern coast of of the, of America to the pioneers going west. They're all all the truth is has been covered up. The European uh, mentality, the European. I, I don't call them colonists anymore, I call them invaders. You have the European invader mentality, and this is where the, the uh, uh, right-wing zealot Christian cultists, that mentality comes from, I believe, the uh, European invaders too. Mm -hmm. The wasp, uh, uh, you know, like that, that man, what was his name, Nathan Bates was keeps on talking about the uh, the Protestant work ethic and all this crap that they have in their minds. Well, the Protestant work ethic, this, this, these come from Calvin, and they come from that misquotation of uh, Paul in the Bible. You don't eat, yeah. you don't work, you don't eat. Well, Paul was talking about doing God's work. Not labor, day-to-day no, -day right, work, right? hired work or whatever. Right. He was talking about if you don't do God's work, then you don't eat. Yeah. Well, they conveniently ignore all the parts of the Bible that tell the rich to help and give to the poor. Yeah, they, they I, don't like, uh, I don't like your term, give to the poor. What do you because want to say? Because that, that is like a trickle-down type situation. Oh, the, the rich are going to give to the poor. Help the rich owe oh, the poor. Well, God, according to God... He who has the, the world's riches owes. Because, because the Bible has it stated that the wealth of the planet Earth, the wealth of the Earth, of the Earth, the natural resources, do, could, do not technically belong to man. No, they belong to God. They belong to God. Even yeah, though you would, people like the CEO of Nestle's, Peter Brabeck, thinks that all the water on this planet can be owned and controlled by him. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, Two-thirds of smokers will die early from cigarette-triggered illness. 
unless they choose to kick the habit. According to a new research from Austria, Australia, the study of more than 200,000 people published this week in BMC Medicine found 67% of smokers died from smoking related illness. The rate is higher than doctors previously estimated. Tobacco smoke can boost the risk for at least 13 types of cancer. The earlier you quit, the better. The relative risks of adverse health effects increase with increasing intensity of smoking. The study says, states, measured by the amount of tobacco smoked per day and with increasing duration of smoking. Smoking 10 cigarettes daily doubles the risk of death. The research showed smoking a pack a day quadruples it. We knew smoking was bad. But we now have direct, independent evidence that confirms the disturbing findings that have been emerging internationally. An estimated 42.1 million Americans smoke cigarettes. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, cigarette smoking is top cause of preventable disease and death in the United States. The agency reports, accounting for more than 480,000 deaths every year, or one in five. Emotional, emotional turmoil aside, smoking is also bad for our wallets. An Ohio State University study found employees who smoke tobacco cost employers roughly $6,000 more annually in health care and productivity than non-smokers. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. it. If it's not healthy for you, don't do it. If it if it if it contributes to your good health and longevity, do it. Well, it's just, it's that simple. Life life is really not rocket science. It's just common sense is is very easy to understand. There was a gentleman on one of your, uh, on Gary Knoll's uh, page. Right. Who said the other day that Mr. Knoll, being a vegan and trying to be healthy and take care of himself, right. had a mental illness. What do you mean? What, what's wrong with that? There's a mental illness in trying to be healthy. Trying to be healthy or, or, or veganism? Trying to be healthy is a mental illness. So, so wanting to do what's what's best for you, for your quality of life, yes. is a mental illness. That's right, and that's why I corrected the gentleman in that fashion, saying that oh, so Gary Null or a person trying to do uh, the best for himself is a mental illness. So poisoning your body and dying prematurely is 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 an example of good mental health. That's correct. According to this individual. Well, you see all the new diseases in the diagnostic <laughs> and uh, oh, what you call it manual. <laughs> Number seven or what the hell <laughs> it is for? <laughs> <or> <laughs> what it is. Uh, in other words, standing up for yourself. Having human rights, pursuing happiness, pursuing health, doing what's best for you and your family. Opposing authority. Uh, uh, opposing, what about opposing uh, corrupt authority that wants to depopulate the poor. 
that need wants to hurt you, poison you. You need an antidepressant. No, I don't. Yeah, you I need do. a fucking revolution. Whoa. Grow a backbone, Pollyanna liberals. Grow a backbone. There's a lot. There's a lot of people that live in the United States. The time for negotiation and using psychology and diplomacy and uh, bipartisanship and compromise is over. The, this, these, this is a force. These are the forces of evil, and sometimes the tumor has to be manually removed and disposed of. So, shake off the pussiness that you have in you that came, probably came from the flower children of the 1960s. There were subtle jabs at Jeb Bush and Scott Walker. As there should be. But the subject, Governor Christie, spent most of his time discussing at a conservative convention on Thursday was one he presumably knows best. I, himself. I, you know, I am so glad that you have this article because I forgot to mention something about Christie recently in the news, and this might explain it. Go ahead. Christie touted his willingness to take unscripted questions from voters, even when that means having sharp exchanges with some of them. I'll have you removed. Sit down and shut up. He <laughs> said... The media elite just want to kill him. So he gave up the, media. the New York Times for Lent. The media elite. Well, if since the media elite is pretty much uh, in bed with corporations and uh, they're corporatists and conservative, then for them to go against Chris Christie and criticize him, doesn't say good things about Chris Christie. You know. And he said he's not explosive or short tempered. He's passionate. <laughs> he passionately will tell you to shut up and sit down. I care about fighting for people. I represent, he said. This is what I was gonna mention. Oh I'm sorry, sit down and shut up. Not shut up and sit down. Sit down and shut up. Yeah. Or leave. Yeah, he yeah, he was he was saying that he cares about the middle class now. And no, he, and and when he finished speaking, the the stupid ass morons gave him a standing ovation. The the this is how the American voter is now. They gave Chris Christie a standing ovation for lying. Yeah, all the Republicans are now for the middle class and uh turtle face has a banner uh, occasionally he puts on Facebook. He wants to get money out of politics. Oh, now he wants to get money out of... Now he wants to overturn Citizens United? No, he didn't go that far. Cut the crap. Well, well then, how do you get, then how do you get the money out of politics? Don't ask me. It's not to be done. They just say so it. So he's blowing hot air? Yes. Talking out of his ass. That's what I just said. They are all... They're all fighting for the middle class but the now. The point is that nobody's holding them accountable for what they say nobody's calling them calling them on this and uh, out of these preposterous things nobody's saying anything this is what's infuriating so afraid of these republicans they're so afraid i care about fighting fights worth fighting and what and what fight what what does he have a problem with actually the poor? Uh, it's the sales pitch Christie may have been forced to give at the Conservative Political Action Conference. Oh, God. An early stage for most potential Republican presidential candidates. So they're just blowing. Big they're saying what they think they have to say. They're blowing big. Get big, elected. They're blowing big hot farts out of their ass in 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 the public media. They're making statements without backing up how they want to do it, or how they've done it in the past. That's like listen, because they never have. That's like me. 
running for governor, wearing a big top hat, dressed like the Monopoly man. Hey. Wearing the black uh, 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 um, uh, a tuxedo with the with the top with the uh, the tails hanging and saying white gloves, saying, "I am all for cutting taxes on the uh, the little guy. Oh. I am all for uh, better education. I am all for this. I am all for that. I'm I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that." How are you going to do it? What's your plan? How are you going to do it? You're just talking? Do they have a plan for Obamacare? A replacement for it? Yeah. No. Okay, fine. But they want to repeal it, don't they? They want to repeal it yeah. so many, like 50 some odd times. Yeah. They want to, they, they do, they have a problem with the poor and lower middle class having act. Hold on. They have a problem with the poor and lower middle class having access to adequate health care and possibly also education. They don't want the poor to be able to go to the doctor, period. But they don't because have... They don't want them to be around longer. They don't, they don't want, Please. but they don't have any alternative uh, uh, solution to any of these problems. No, because that's not what they deal in. They deal in corporations from the rich, not the, you know, middle class and poor. It's not their cup of tea. So the only people actually standing up to them are probably a few people on MSNBC? Maybe. That's it. Nobody else in the U.S. media is standing up to them. You know, publicly. Drink up, coffee lovers! Drink up coffee lovers? Okay. Neurologists say a healthy appetite for coffee may reduce your risk of developing multiple sclerosis. Really? You hear that? Listen to this. I don't know who paid for the study yet. Lisa Cohen. Okay. Who paid for the study? That's Maybe right. it's uh coffee makers! The coffee industry. We're not talking a cup or two of uh. dough in the morning. Even a triple espresso might not be enough to register a difference. In a new study, yeah. researchers found that Americans who downed at least four cups of coffee per day were one-third less likely to develop multiple sclerosis than their counterparts who drank no coffee at all. So there, that means that there's something in, in the coffee bean which medicinally uh, treats autoimmune diseases. So, well, who did the study? At the end of the article, does it mention who did the study? Did we get there yet? No. Well. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not putting you on the spot. I'm just talking to the person who that wrote the article. They also found that Swedish adults who guzzled at least six cups of coffee every day. Oh, really? Sweet Swedes do that? Well, it's cold up there. Were also one third less likely to get MS. Put another way, people who issued coffee were 1.5 times more likely to be diagnosed with MS than people with a serious coffee habit. Hey, Carlton Fredericks, God rest his soul, in, 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 in last, the last book he wrote said that, that egg eaters outlive non-egg eaters by a substantial margin. That's something that surprised people who, who read it. Now in this case, coffee, it smells great, it tastes great if it's if you're using good water. Uh, and it's not burnt coffee like Starbucks or should I say Charbucks. Uh, you know, coffee's wonderful. The caffeine is not wonderful. But I've been reading articles about coffee having uh, possible antioxidant uh, value, medicinal value. But it's good news. Multiple sclerosis causes muscle weakness that can be, that can make it difficult or impossible for patients to walk 
or even stand. In worst cases, it can lead to paralysis. Patients can also experience tremors, speech impediments, among other symptoms. Yeah, like Annette Fornicello, right? She had it really bad. Researchers think the disease is triggered by a misguided immune system, which attacks the myelin, myelin, myelin sheath, that protects the spinal cord. There is no cure. Previous studies have found that people who drink coffee were less likely to develop Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, two other neurological diseases. So there was reason to think the health benefits of coffee, or more specifically its caffeine, might apply to multiple sclerosis as well. The international group of researchers started with data from a Swedish study that tracked 1,629 people who developed MS, as well as 2,807 people who did not. Okay, Swedish study. I respect it already. It's not, it's not a United States study. When they compared coffee consumption in both groups, they found that those who drank six or more cups of coffee per day were 33% less likely than non-drinkers to be diagnosed with MS the following year. Going back further in time, they discovered that people who were heavy coffee drinkers five years earlier were 30% less likely to get MS in the next year. They also found that those who were drinking lots of coffee 10 years earlier were 28% less likely to develop MS symptoms. The United States data were from Kaiser Permanente patients in Northern California. Okay. Researchers compared 584 people with multiple sclerosis. 581 control. In this group, people who drank at least four cups of coffee a day were 33% less likely to have MS symptoms a year later. Okay. Promising. Well, I do want to say this about multiple sclerosis and you know, autoimmune disease in general. It's, um, it's hard to understand and it's sad, very sad, that the immune, our immune system would attack us, attack itself. Um, people would they have MS and possibly other autoimmune diseases tend to be deficient in vitamin D. Uh, what they're recommending, what doctors are recommending, are, are mega doses of vitamin D, which are not really that mega anymore. Uh, 5,000 international units should be taken, vitamin D. But I would also take at least 10,000 international units of natural vitamin A, because vitamin A is very important for the health of your immune system. Very important. At least 10,000. Uh, right now I'm taking 15,000 of A and uh, 1,200 of D, uh, half from fish oil, uh, in little soft gel capsules, and uh, do that. And uh, uh, um, definitely, definitely, if you're a woman, purchase Lisa Cohen's book. Okay, Lisa Cohen's book uh, from Amazon, bestseller, Overcome the BS of MS, a three-step plan for women living with multiple sclerosis. Okay, Lisa Cohen, spelled uh, capital C-O-H-E-N, over on Amazon. And... Um, 
there's also a good article on livestrong.com concerning multiple sclerosis. Uh, all right, uh, we have time for one more, perhaps uh, uh, something light or something heavy. I was shocked to read that Governor Christie vetoed the bill to restore emergency food benefits to 160,000 New Jersey residents and that the legislature failed to override the veto. The legislature, which consists of uh, Democrats, right? Uh, the people that stabbed Barbara Buono in the back and re-elected Chris Christie, failed to override the veto to provide food for New Jersey's poor. This is bad. This is an important reading. It's a good thing you're reading it now. This is really bad. Shame on you, Chris Christie, and the Republican Party, and even more so, shame on you, sellout, backstabbing, corporatist Democrats over in Trenton, New Jersey. Clearly, none of those legislators <clears throat> has ever had to go to bed with hunger pains in a state where one in ten residents struggles with hunger each day. Even more disturbing to me as an earlier article about many senior citizens going without food each month, that was truly agonizing to read. Not every senior has other income besides Social Security. Many struggle to pay their utility and medical bills. But the phrase, a senior food anxiety, should not be part of our state's vocabulary. Senior citizens should have a decent retirement. They should not have to suffer. Well, but the Republicans want to cut Social Security. Well, maybe, maybe it's part of their uh, depopulation program, the elitists. Maybe so, or maybe it's part of what your aunt used to say. Oh, well, she said Social Security was meant to be just a supplement That's to a retirement, uh, a retired person's That's income. That's correct. Meaning that the retired person is supposed to Provide be, able, for his own be able to save for his or her own retirement. Correct. And if you don't, if you can't save, you die, basically. Well, if they want to do away with Social Security, you do. Mm -hmm. Okay, because there's nothing else for you. And they don't want they don't want uh, people on a fixed income to have Medicare. They don't want you to have uh, health coverage. And that too. So, which means that only the um, the well uh, financially independent retired seniors will be able to live a healthy, happy life in their retirement. And of course, uh, I'm not going to speak uh, for other states, but I'm sure it's uh, mostly the same. In New Jersey, uh, there's quite a bit of uh, inability to determine what an income is. For instance, yeah. New Jersey has a program called SLMB, and it uh, involves the poor uh, getting support from the state of New Jersey to pay for their Medicare Part B, their doctor part. Mm -hmm. And along with all the other uh, questions and uh, income uh, 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 questions and things of that nature, you have to, if you have life insurance, whole mm -hmm. life insurance, there's a surrender value to that. In other well, words, if you would take it and you would surrender it, yeah. they would give you a certain amount well, of money well, and this proceeds upward every year or so. Yeah, but you 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 pay a penalty for cashing in your life insurance. Of course, you got nothing to bury you with. Well, uh, so they count this as income now. Yes, they count this surrender value of a life insurance policy as income. Do they do they count the eight uh, what is it 15 or 18% right now capital gains as income? Hypocrisy. 
Of course it's hypocrisy. Double standard. And how about that gentleman in New Jersey here who found, what, $850 on the ground, takes it to the police six months later, mm -hmm. nobody claims that he gets it? That's income? Yeah, his uh, welfare caseworker uh, um, terminated his... Um, Correct. The man's welfare because he, he she called it unreported income. Correct. Meanwhile, he found $800 and he turned it into the police in Hackensack, New Jersey. Yeah. Where is that, that income? How is it? It's a gift of God. It's a one-time affair. Now, if he was... See, the government, the system, makes people cheat on social services. But that, that man technically could have done it was pocketed it was it's cash you yeah. can't prove it yeah hey could you prove how many tips the go-go dancer gets but look at all, all the whistleblowers no. who are going to jail and it's there because they're trying to do the right thing oh you're called a whistleblower and maybe a traitor if you rat out the evil scum yes. if you rat out the criminals in yeah. our system, you are called a whistleblower. Yeah. But you pay a penalty. Instead of a hero. Instead of a Snowden. Yeah, Edward Snowden. Snowden should come back to the United States and face, you know. And guess who said that? <laughs> Democrat John Kerry said that yeah, no, demonized John Snowden and said he that he should return to the U.S. and face, face the music and go to jail. Bullshit. And this is a Democrat. This is the same sellout, corporatist, Democrat mentality that, along with Chris Christie, taking food out of the mouths of poor people. All residents in need should be enrolled in the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, if qualified. And not to have to wait six months for benefits. That is not only unacceptable, it is frightening and unfathomable. In my town, we have a local food pantry that, that serves more than 600 families monthly. And several times a year, they cannot meet demand because the pantry shelves are empty. I support this pantry as much as I can, but I'm only one person. I urge your readers to support the pantries in their towns and to give generously to action against hunger drives. Also, urge lawmakers to support measures to improve this state's SNAP initiative. Yeah. No one in New Jersey should ever go hungry. In, in, this, in this type of country, no one Especially children should go to bed hungry. But they do. In this country, but they do. Yeah. Because we got to get those subsidies to the oil companies and the fossil fuel. Billions and, and, and billions and trillions of free corporate welfare. Yeah. yeah. But there's never any money to help the poor. Never any money to help the poor. Thank you very much, people, for joining us for uh, this week's Uncensored Hard-Hitting Truth. Um, it was 
it's a special memorial show for actor Leonard Nimoy, and also a, a uh, congratulations, uh, a launching show for uh, Lisa Cohen and her new book, which I mentioned earlier. Um, and that's it. Have, have a good, good weekend and a good week, and we'll see you next time. God willing. It'll be uh, March when we see you next time. Not spring, because March 21st is the first. But it is Daylight Savings Time next week. Uh, that stupid Daylight Put the Savings. clock ahead. Clock ahead. Is this spring ahead? Ahead, fall Roll back. Right. Well, uh, the next special day that's coming up is St. Patrick's Day. So, uh, you know, in honor of my Blackthorn Irish shillelagh and the uh, all you can eat corned beef and cabbage that I will be gorging into my system mm. because I have a feeling my favorite buffet, the flaming. I mean, grill buffet. There's a good chance to be having corned beef and cabbage, and I, I will be there eating it like it, like the next day was Armageddon. Oh, you! Oh, <laughs> you were food, food uh, uh, hungry. Well, I hopefully, well, knowing the buffet, it will be good quality brisket of corned beef. Uh, you know, to buy corned beef outright is expensive. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why it is. All it is 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 cheaper cuts of meat, which brisket really is, soaked in brine, which is mm. salt water, with some spices in there, some peppercorns or whatever, you know, it's soaked in brine, that's all <laughs> it is, uh, I, I don't know why it costs so much per pound, so it's, for me, it's cheaper to just go to the buffet, gotta love them Asians there that, that, that run the buffets in my region because depending on which one you go to it's I'm telling you the, I don't go to any seafood restaurant anymore uh, I don't go to any sushi place you know mm -hmm. uh, Japanese sushi bar whatever I, I, I get I go to a good upscale buffet and I just have all, all those things in a reasonable price. Alright, we'll see you next time. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Take care. Say goodbye to these jabronis. Hi, Jab Browns. Jab Browns. Jab Browns. This has been a Mega Lab 21 production.